Hi guys, and welcome to this Model Engineers workshop. Today in the workshop, I'm starting bodybuilding. Let me clarify that. I'm starting the body of the axle pump. All right guys, here goes. Hi guys, I'm the chef. Today in the workshop, we're gonna make a start on the axle pump body. Quite a complicated bit. And going by the drawings, you need a piece of 25 mil round brass, a piece of 19 mil round brass, and you drill a big hole in the 25, put the 19 through it, and silver solder the whole lot together, and then you start making the body by drilling the holes, the slots, and everything in it. So you're basically making a little cross out of the two bits of brass. Well, I've got 25, but I don't have 19, and I don't really want to turn down the 25 to make it 19, and then go through the whole hoo-ha of drilling a hole, silver solder in, so I've had to scratch around and see what I've got. And I've got this. There's a honking great chunk of brass. Again, one of my favorite sayings and favorite things to do. It's a scrapyard find. This is 38 by 25.4, which is going to be, what, inch by inch and a half. So, yes, I do have to take a bit, quite a bit off. But it's going to make the body one piece. It's going to be no leaks. It's going to be, well, it's rectangular at the moment, which means when we start holding things in... The chucks, I can centre it up accurately in the four jaw chuck. Drill all the holes, drill, drill and ream the hole for the pump ram itself. I can drill the cross hole for the suction valve and the discharge valve. Uh, we need to have a couple of slots milled in it, a uh, six mil slot. So I can mill those slots through. Don't need to go all the way through. I just need to go uh, literally about six or eight mil from each side. And then as I drill and ream to come through for the pump ram itself, that will sort itself out and those slots will eventually become clear because, of course, the axle pump yoke, which is the piece we made a few weeks ago, comes on the outside of this with a pin through it and we get a rotary motion from the eccentric on the driving axle, on the no, the coupled axle, and that will, this yoke will then do that nice little rotary motion, create a linear motion because we have a couple of bearings to push into here yet and a long pin to go through. And guess what? Once we get the pump ram made, it'll be doing this and it'll be a become a, a working water pump. So we need 100 mil of this. So I'm going to go to about 105, which will allow me to clean both ends off in the lathe. And because uh, I still have the four jaws still on the lathe from the last video, I'll get this cut off. We'll get the bit done and... I'll bring you back at that. Okay, guys, back in a tick. Okay, so that's 103 mil. Gonna get this into the four jaw now. Of course, when you're doing a, a rectangular piece like this, uh, you indicate off this side and this side, get that to the center, and then you turn it around, indicate off both sides. So you do it not in the round, you do it in the square. Uh, if this was actually square, I do also have a self centering four jaw chuck. Also always useful for those jobs when you're actually turning square material. Right, uh, so there you go. That took a little bit longer than I expected. That was about 10 minutes of cutting. Uh, hopefully I've got edited that down to about 30 seconds or a minute, just so that it's not gonna to be too boring. And right, I'll get this in the four jaw, get it indicated in, and we'll get cleaning up on these end faces and get it down to size. All right, guys, let's get this done. Right, guys, so got the piece in the four jaw. Just spent up half an hour. Glad I didn't record that for you. Just kind of getting this as close to zero. So check it here with a DTI. Move it around. See if you get the same number. Just just case of wobbling it a little bit till you get the lowest mark. When you get that done, do the same here. Go back, same here. Go back, same here. And eventually you get it down to, I got it down to 0.1 of a millimeter, which is going to be close enough. 
course, I'm just going to face this end off, so it might seem a bit extreme to do, but it's always good practice. Uh, when I've done that, I'll loosen any two jaws, flip the piece around, put it back in with the machined end in the chuck itself. I'll have I'll do a measure just to so, see how roughly I'm uh, good to size. Just going to take as little as I can off this end, by the way, just to uh, make sure it's clean. And then we'll bring it down to size. But I'll have to re-indicate it, of course, which could take me another half an hour. But because you're only using two jaws, leaving two set, you should be able to put that piece back in, tighten them up, and you'll be very close. Right, guys, so let's uh, get this going. I'm going to take it very light because it's an interrupted cut just until you start getting down to the middle and uh, we'll get this end cleaned off. So that was 0.6 of a mil. I'm just going to take another 0.2 off. That was three cuts at 0.2. This is going to be another cut 0.2, and I'll use the cross power cross feed just to get a nicer finish than that. Uh, right. So last cut on this end, guys. I'll just set move two in 0.2 a mil. We'll get the lathe on, and we'll go on power feed.
There we go. Just as you notice, I just withdrew the tool. Just resetting that to its setting. And that way you don't leave a mark on it or scratch on it as you're coming out. That's a lovely finish. Everything nice and tight. Yep, super. Right, now I'm not going to show you the other end. I'll do that and I'll bring you back. I'll pr probably be on the bench and we'll start thinking about what we're going to do is next. All right, guys, back in a tick. Okay, so now both ends are machined off. And I've just given it a quick wipe on a bit of emery. You can see, you can tell it's a scrap yard. Fine, can't you? It's a beat to buggery, really. Right. Um, going to go off to the mill now. And this dimension here needs to be 30. This is 38. So I'm just going to very quickly walk four mil off each side. That'll give us two nice clean sides. And uh, once we've got that done, we'll start thinking about marking up and putting some holes into this thing. And a slot. It's going to be fun, isn't it? All right. Um, right, guys. Let me get into this into the mill vice, and I'll bring you back. Right, guys. Set up in the mill. As you can see, a little shiny piece there I've just touched off. So I'm going to get four, take literally four mil straight off the top of this. Then I'm going to flip them over well, and put them back in the vice. But before I put them back in the vice, I'll do a proper measurement so I know what I've got to take off. We've got to get this down to 30 by 25.4 well it's already at 25.4 wide so nothing to do on that one thank goodness we just got to drop the height why aren't i going to take eight mil straight off here uh i want it's going to give me two clean faces these are the manufactured faces and as you can see after rubbing a little bit on a bit of emery paper you can see they're not perfect by any means but this will give me two good clean parallel square faces to work from when we start doing the marking out so, as I say, four mil going to come off. I'm going to show you one, and uh, then I'll go off camera, get the other cuts done, and uh, I'll bring you back at that. So we're going to take off half a mil to see how far we're going, see how it's going, and uh, it's going to get noisy. We're going to turn the mill on. So here we go. Right guys, that's cleaning up really nicely, nice surface finish. As you saw, I was using a piece of plastic just to stop the swarf flying everywhere. Some of you might recognise that. That is a menu standard from the local cafe. They were going to, this one's a bit beat. Uh, I asked them nicely, they said, sure, here you go, take it. Yeah, just handheld. I can hold it like that and keep my fingers out of the way if I really want to. Uh, brass is not... No, I am recording. Okay. For a second there, guys, I thought I wasn't recording, but I am. Uh, so, yeah, handheld, no problems. Can hold it either there to keep my fingers out of the way, hold it here or whatever. Worth asking at your local friendly cafe. You never know, they might have something you can use. Right. I'm going to get the next three next cuts done, get this down by four mil, and then I'll bring you back. Right, guys. So, there we go. That's the two surfaces machined off. This is down to 30 mil. This, of course, is 25.4. Next job. Right. So I'm going to put this in the vise, center up on the corner of the vise, which uh, like I always do, which I've just rechecked, is on zero in both directions. And uh, we're going to come to the middle here, so 12.7. We're then going to come down 21. 
and put in a center drill go through all the way through with a six mil then a 10 mil then a 12 mil which is the closest i've got to the tapping size for quarter bsp which should be uh, 11.8 so 0.2 of a millimeter bigger it's not going to make any difference i'm going to start this in the mill i'm doing all this drilling on the mill like i said uh, so i'm going to get this started in the mill and if it starts because if it starts slipping in the uh, drill chuck we'll just whip the whole lot out stick it in the vise which is just off here to my left and use the tap wrench to go all the way through right guys give me a tick i'll get this all set up in the milling machine and i'll bring you back all right all set up in the mill now come across 12 and a 0.7 come down 21 and the center drill 6 mil 10 mil 12 mil and then we'll get the tap in it's going to get noisy when i turn the machine on but won't be too bad guys here goes
Right guys, so that's all the drilling done. As you saw, the tap started to slip on me. So I'm just going to release it from the drill chuck. Let that come away and I'll get this into the vise and we'll finish off tapping that with a hand wrench. So a few seconds later, mounted up in the soft jaws in the vise. Tap is still in place because that's where we left it, of course. Tap wrench. I'll just wind that back down a little bit till it starts biting again. Here we go. And as, as always, as much as this is brass, backwards and forward every time just to clear any chips that might be caught in the threads or in the tap itself. Right, let's get this through. starting to get lighter. Tap is just starting to come through the bottom. We need to make sure we get all the way through with the good threads. There we go. We should be there almost by now. Yes. And all of a sudden it gets really free. There we go. Right. Let's wind that out carefully now. And a little bit of a deburr on top and bottom. And we'll take a look at what we've got. Right, I'll just get that deburring done and I'll bring it back. Okay, deburring's done, top and bottom, nice and smooth, no rough edges. The thread in there is nice and crisp, as you can see. So, what do we got to do now? Right, well, we've got to imagine there's going to be a hole going all the way through this later on. But in the meantime, we need to produce a slot that actually will go through to that hole that's going to go in later on. Uh, so it's going to be a six mil slot. Now I've got a six mil slot drill. Let me zoom out of that. There we go. Right. So slot drills, two flutes, but they are also center cutting, but just I'm going to make life a little bit easier on myself. I'm going to center drill the two centers. Drill, uh, this is a five mil drill, drill five. So we've got to come in six and a half from this end and go down about eight. And I'm going to come across 22, do the same again, go down about eight so that we will break into that so that the hole that goes through for the pump ram itself will break through into these slots later on. And then I'm going to go in. I'm a bit of a chicken. I've never really cut much of a slot before. Uh, I'm going to go into that hole again, come along, come along, come along, come along until I hit eight. And then I'm going to turn the whole thing over and do it again, actually, come to think about it, just to make sure that these two slots are equal to each other, we will turn it that way and work from the other end so that they line, so that they line up this way as well. End to end is probably not too bad because there's going to be a little bit of slop in there anyway, but I think they should be in the same plane. So of course, by flipping it end to end, the fixture in the vise is the constant. If I do it, here and then roll it over and put it on an, onto a new face. So that could be, I don't know, 0 0.01 of a millimetre or something, I don't know. But let's not take that chance. Let's make sure we get this right because it's a big block of brass. I don't really want to make it again. I'm just taking the time. Right, guys, going into the vise, set it up again with the zeros on the corners, work it out, come back, do the 6.5 with a centre drill and a 5 mil, go down 8, the 6.5, then come back 22, Go down, centre drill, eight mil, five mil, and then we'll get into the. I'll get this mounted up in a collet chuck, and uh, we'll start making a slot. All right, guys, bring you back when I'm ready. Right, guys, back at the mill. Looks clamped in nice and firm. Adjusted the centre line to be 15, because this is course is 30. Come along 71.5, so that's uh, 
it's at 28 and a half from the end. And we're going to center drill and drill down about eight or nine millimeters. Then we come along to another 22, which makes a six and a half from the, this end. And do the same again. Then I'm going to change to the slot drill and we will just go backwards and forwards until I go down uh, sufficiently. Uh, like I say, it needs to go down about eight or nine millimeters. Right, guys, I'm going to drill one of these and I'll get the other one drilled. And then when we get to the, I'll stop the camera there and then I'll bring you back when we get to the slotting stage. Okay, here goes. Okay, guys, you get the idea. Go and drill the next one further down, and then I'll bring you back for ready for slotting. Okay, guys, second hole is drilled. Uh, change out the drill chuck, put the collet chuck in. This has got the M6, the 6 mil, sorry, uh, slotting drill in it. I've touched off. I'm going to run the mill now. I'm going to go up, bring the table up about half a mil, make a cut. Go again, get it back to this position here. Actually, I don't need to, I can get it to there using the DRO so I know I'm in the right place. And uh, then I can take it down another half and I'll come back down half and I'll do the first couple of cuts anyway, so you get the drift. And uh, then I'll go off camera and finish this slot off. All right, here goes. There you go. Not looking bad, little slot. Never done this before. So I'm just going to go off camera, take my time, and I'll bring you back when I can show you something. All right, guys, back soon. Right, that was a bit nerve wracking. Never done that before. So, uh, as you can see, one slot, a few rough edges, but they'll clean up later on. Uh, right, take it out, bang out all the crap out of the slot, put it on the bench, let's have a look, and uh, then we'll get it back in the vise.
Do the other side. Okay. Back in a tick. Okay, there we go. One slot, and it is, as you can see, I drilled deep enough down so that the center, the slot drill always had a bit of clear space underneath it. Uh, yep, we get this that way around into the vise now, so at least we're referring off the same face up against the fixed jaw in the mill vise. And then it's case coming in 66 and a half and then 28 and a half and ditto repeater. Right. Uh, I won't show you that. You've seen this one. I'll come back to you when I've got both of these slots done now. All right, guys, back in a tick. Right, guys, so there we go. That was the first slot. There's the second one. Both in now, just giving us a bit of a rub on a bit of emery paper. So uh, we're coming on nicely with this now. We've just got to get this back into the, th the four jaw, center it up, of course. Nice and accurate. Got a big hole to go all the way through there. So different sizes. We're going to put a thread in the end. Got to turn this end down to fit the flange that uh, we made earlier. So you can imagine that the flange will go there along those lines. Then this is the axle pump yoke, which we made a couple of videos ago. This will be here. You've got to imagine this whole thing is horizontal. And this will then be part of the driving mechanism that works the pump backwards and forwards. Pumping water continuously. You've got to imagine it like that. Uh, pumping water continuously once uh, once it's in the loco. Oh, there's a lot of weight in this, but yeah. Obviously, it's what it needs. That's what the design calls for. Right, guys. Uh, next step. Let's have a think. I need to drill a little hole here to the right kind of depth. I'll have to calculate that one. Uh, tap that M5 because one of the little oil cups that we made earlier will be going into that. That will then also have a tiny little hole that drips through oil into here so that the pump ram is continuously lubricated. Uh, once that's done, as I say, into the forge jaw and do all the big boring. And then we'll uh, turn a little bit of this away, then turn that down to 25.4, 25, just to tidy up. And then we've also got an awful lot of this to turn away and we eventually turn it into round. And we're just going to leave that little bit there as a square block round here, round there, a little bit of a uh, spigot on it there just to locate that into the flange ready for silver soldering. Right. Okay, guys, uh, I've got some calculations to do, and I'll bring you back. Righto, guys, so I've done my calculations. So I'm now centered up here on the block. I'm the right distance from the end. Center drill in the chuck. I'm going to make a center drill. And then I'm going to drill 4.2 for an M5 tap. As I always talk about my little blue line, there you can see it. I've got it marked on both flutes. So once that blue line reaches the top surface here, I know I'm the right depth, bearing in mind a lot of this will be turned away once we get it into the chuck at the end, once we've got the bore put in it. So that's my blue line. And then just going to very quickly run a little chamfer into the top of that and then run in the mill on a very slow speed, just get the tap started, whip it out, put it in the vise, and then finish tapping the hole until the tap bottoms out uh, uh, with a hand wrench. All right, guys. We're going to start this up, getting to get a bit noisy. Let's get this piece as far as we can today. Here we go.
there we go i'll just get the hand wrench onto there tap it to the full depth that it can then i'm going to take this out and then i have to drill a one millimeter 1.6 millimeter hole just a little bit further so that will eventually break through into the bore that runs through the whole thing i'll bring you back onto the bench when i've got all that done <coughs> won't be long guys change my mind holes already finished tapping this is a 1.5 millimeter drill i'm going to run it fairly fast and just peck away just it, 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 because of course if you lock that one up and you break it in that hole now there's a lot of work probably getting it out and this might make this piece scrap so let's hope we don't do that knock on wood there we go uh let's just get this hole drill drilled it only needs to go a couple of mil down uh just enough so it'll break into the bore that will eventually go all the way through all right guys here we go There we go. That should do it. Right. I'll see you on the bench in a minute. Right. So there we go. There's the hole. Got a little thread in it. Can we see that? Yes, we can. There's the little oil hole in the bottom. So here's one of the oil cups we made in a previous video. That will screw into there eventually once we get this all machined down. I won't put it on all the way at the minute. I'll probably put a little bit of thread lock on that and of course once that's in and this lines up then we can know where we can put the little extension tube for the silicon to the oil reserve for the in this axle pump so drilled and tapped big hole a couple of slots one little small hole with an even smaller hole in the bottom next job get this into the forger on the lathe machine this end down so that we can get the flange onto it and then start creating the bore i think it might be better to get the flange on and silver soldered that way the silver soldering is not going to upset the bore at all although i could run the reamer through it again it wouldn't make any difference yeah probably i'm gonna uh get the flange on and get the silver soldering done right guys uh turning into a long video i'll be back in a tick right up guys this is turning into a longer video than i thought so i'll split it in two so we've done all the slots and the holes that we need to do in this so far next job as i just said get it into the forward jaw get this turned get the flange silver soldered on and then we need to get it back in the forward jaw and go all the way through 100 mil and uh, cross all these holes and slots and get it reamed out ready for the pump ram itself all right guys this is the chef signing out saying as i normally do if you can find it in your heart and soul to give me a like a subscribe and maybe hit the bell if you're a little watcher please 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 subscribe it does my heart good just to have this many subscribers. I'm so grateful to you all. Right up, guys. This is Chef Sang out saying, see you later.